Hey guys, it's Sarah Tabo. Welcome to Restored the Album, behind the scenes, behind the song, behind the story, BTS. And today I'm joined by Lou Fellingham, a wonderful friend, a wonderful sister. I only got to know her re really recently, but she has been a blessing and inspiration to me for years. She probably doesn't realize that. Um, before I actually carry on talking about Lou and you know how she's been a blessing to me and to the project, she actually features on a song called Victory, which I released as an EP earlier on in the year, and it's now on the album, features um, Zion and Tom Endersby. But before I carry on reeling on all her credentials and everything, I'd love for, you know, for Lou to you, you to introduce yourself to everyone watching. And yeah, let's just take it from there. Right. Well, hi, everybody. Um, as you know, my name's Lou and I live in Brighton. I've lived here for a long time now and uh, I married a drummer of a band that I used to be in and I'm still married to him, which is good news. And we've got three kids, uh, Jesse, Ella and Jude. And Jesse is 17 and Ella's 14 and Jude's just turning 11. So life is busy. It is. It sounds really busy. This yeah. is interesting. When you said you married the drummer in your in your um, a group you used to be in, I'm like, I can literally yeah. see the chemistry when you went for rehearsals and things like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always fancied him. No, actually, when I first met him, I thought he was a bit obnoxious. But within a few weeks, it, it turned around. And um, yeah, I always had the hots for him. Oh, bless. Oh, that's so sweet. I remember when I was a teenager, I had a crush on the drummer in our group as well. But that went south very quickly. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did actually date for a year and then split up for a year and then dated again and then got engaged. So all oh, within wow. us still being in the band. So it was quite complicated. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That, that sounds yeah. like an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. And does he still drum today? Uh, no. So when the band finished, his name's Nathan. When the band finished, Fat Fish was the name of the band. And uh, we were a band for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. And when that finished, he then moved on to keyboards. So now when I go around playing, doing music and stuff, he plays keys for me generally. So oh, wow. I do miss his drumming, though. So yeah. every now and again, I every now and again, I get him on the drums just because I really love to hear the way that he drums. Oh. I'm, I'm quite fussy about drummers. Oh, that is really nice. Do you find <laughs> yourself comparing his drumming skills to like, when you've got somebody playing for you on a gig and you're like he can't play half as good as my husband <laughs> <laughs> well not maybe not quite as black and white as that but I think I um I definitely have high expectations of a drummer in terms of sound and musical ability and how they carry things and mm. their you know their musical ear coming through in a song so it's not just mm -hmm. a they need to dig they need to sit in the groove but also have this kind of they need to make the song sing as they yeah. drum so yeah yeah, 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 yeah as yeah, you can yeah, tell yeah. I'm a little bit fussy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it makes sense it makes sense um I actually found out about you many years ago actually um you you sang in Christ Alone yeah and that version that you sang especially the one that was done live actually that mm. resonated with me so much. I know Incredible is a very popular hymn. Um, what some people don't realize is that myself and Lou actually go to the same family of churches, the New yeah. Frontiers family of churches. And In Christ Alone comes from the New Frontiers family of churches. It's pretty much our anthem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think wow. everyone has done a version of the song, but your version of the song just really, it, it struck me. And I actually then went and looked you up. That's how I found out about Fat Fish. I, I didn't oh, really know really? much about the band. Yeah, I was like, who's this lady? And I literally went and looked <laughs> you up and I found all these fantastic things about you. Um, but then at the time, I wasn't actually, I don't think I'd started serving, because I go to King's Church in South East London. Yeah. I don't think I'd started serving there. Um, but, you know, I just, you know, you have all these artists that you love. You know, I followed you on Instagram and everything. Um, I love your live album, um, Made For You. That is oh, one thanks. of them I've actually listened to from top to bottom. It, it makes you feel like you're in the moment. Like I can actually feel myself in the building when I listen to the project. I'd, I'm sure you did that on purpose. I hope so. Yeah, that's what we want. That's what we want. We want yeah. you to feel like you're caught up in the worship at the same time. So. Yeah, absolutely. I literally can picture all the experiences, all the moments that happen in the room when I listen to that album. Um, but then I finally got to meet you in person. It was last year. No, no, nobody met anyone in person last year. No. <laughs> Feels like it was last year, but actually. <laughs> it, was last year. it was 2019. We had a worshippers meeting in Brighton. I think it was Emmanuel Church in Brighton. Yeah. And a few of us from our worship team in King's Church went down. And it was a time in my life when I was so busy doing so much. Uh, and I was really exhausted spiritually. 
And even though physically everything was like, you know, just up and going, but I just felt like I was just overwhelmed by so much. And I just, first and foremost, I was like, oh my God, lose here. I have to find a way to make contact. I just have to find a way. I remember I came to you in the front of the room and I said, I'd really love to, you know, for you to mentor me somehow. And um, just, you know, because I look up to you as, as a minister, as an artist, as a singer, and as a fellow, you know, server, if you like, within mm-hmm. the, the New Frontiers churches. And um, I really had to summon up courage, I have to say, because it's not something I'm, I'm naturally inclined to do. And I was quite mm-hmm. impressed that you actually gave me your number. And you were Aww. like, yeah, call me. Because the thing is, I the first kind of resistance I had was knowing you and knowing how, you know, I, I say this, you probably don't, yeah, not everyone likes to hear this, but I know that you're a really established artist. And so I felt like you already have a long list of people who you mentor or, you know, who look up to you, who are constantly on the phone to you. And I'm like, I'm going to add myself to that long list. She probably won't have time for me. You know, that was the first thing I thought is you won't have the time, but you definitely were like, yeah, take my number. And then the other thing about me is then summoning summoning up the courage to then call you and be like because I remember I said to you that I feel like I'm in a place where I need to kind of go on a retreat or something I don't know if you remember Mm -hmm. and you Mm -hmm. said you need to do that Mm -hmm. and so till today I haven't done that which is why (laughs) (laughs) right Sarah so we need to have a little chat then don't we (laughs) I know I know I know it's crazy honestly I feel like well we did have um you know lockdown so just does it kind of count? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't think it counts because where in a retreat you're by yourself, mm. lockdown, you have the kids who you're home oh, yeah. feeling and feeding and entertaining whilst doing a day job and working on music. It, it was count. intense. <laughs> it is intense. Some days I was close to pulling out my hair. It was just like, yeah. come on. It was just, yeah. but thank God it's in the past. We can actually look back and laugh, mm-hmm. you know, thank God that we can look back and be like, and look back and be like, yeah, it's over yeah just we about. Made it that, and yeah, yeah and, and and we're grateful but no I mean so that was the thing for me I was I was in that place I mean now I'm actually a bit over that because I've been able to create times and create moments and create pockets where I can just you know step back and uh, like Jesus did in the bible he walked away you know onto the yeah. mountain top he withdrew from the crowd and I've learned one of the things I've learned to the lockdown is to be able to actually withdraw you know because mm-hmm. when you're in the house with everyone it's just overwhelming sometimes and you just need yeah. to be able to consciously create that space for yourself to withdraw and to just be one with God. And I've been able to do that, but I'd love to go on a retreat. Mm. Anyone watching who knows about a retreat, hit me up. because <laughs> I just want to go on a whole weekend, just a retreat, yeah. especially for women who lead worship, because I feel like we have an added responsibility of the whole family life dynamic. And mm-hmm. then, you know, if we're writing and producing and, and creating and ministering, it's just a lot but no so that was how I obviously I contacted you and I don't know what you felt when when I came to you like can I have your number (laughs) yeah I mean the thing is I don't actually give my number out very often I would normally I would normally want to encourage somebody who speaks to me but I would have to be honest and say you know what I don't always have the capacity to do it um because like you say life is busy um so I tend to say no more than I say yes unless I feel that it's the right thing to do so you know we uh we were meant to be Sarah wow, just connected and uh yeah I I, I honestly don't I really don't because I I've um yeah I, I think I one thing I've learned in ministry is how to put good boundaries in yeah. so you sometimes end up running too hard or you pushing yourself a bit too hard and stuff but there's still ways to put boundaries in now that you can just know actually that's gonna that's gonna take me one step over for instance my son really wanted me to have a puppy over lockdown that for me had to have a boundary and I was like if I have a puppy at this moment bud I'm actually gonna get ill so I'm gonna have to say no even though I really want to say yes to you so yeah. you know, a silly thing but it's like I think um, when life is busy and life is full and there's lots of demand and lots of things that look exciting and you want to be involved in, you want to give yourself to, actually learning, actually, is this for me? Mm. Is this what I really have to give myself to or do I need to put a boundary in here? That sort of thing is quite helpful. Mm. I mean, obviously, we still have moments where we get it wrong. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but not with you, Sarah. In in hearing (laughs) that, I'm actually now feeling really privileged in hearing that. I'm like, wow. (laughs) gosh I'm one of the many I'm one of the few I should say (laughs) it's so interesting because when Victory came out in the EP 
and mm. um tom who also you, you probably know tom Endersby. he's we tend to co-lead worship a lot in church yeah. and so we were co-leading after the release came out and after the song came out i should say and um so we're just saying to a few of our friends in church oh lou's on the song and one of them who's also a worship on the worship team was like how did you get lou on your <laughs> song how did you like how did you get lou, lou is like wow like because you're royalty that's the truth i really am not but well, there you. you go <laughs> yeah i'm really not i'm just somebody who happens to be doing it and has been doing it for a long time a long I think time honestly great. this is the thing and it's not something you see often the longevity that you have you've been able to maintain through being in a group and being you know a solo artist or minister and constantly re, re almost like reinventing yourself as well whilst also holding down your brand that's a huge mm -hmm. task for anyone to, to you know to sustain and you've been able to do that which is why I looked up to you and I was like yeah it's not that many people that I'll be able to summon up the courage to talk to the way I uh, the way I did you and I'm glad I'm I did. I'm really glad you did so am yeah. I I'm really glad <laughs> I'm quite nice you know I, I don't mind having a chat so it's yeah good. yeah yeah that's the other thing I need to start doing I need to schedule one in like every quarter but we'll talk about that <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that in yeah we will Let's we will it. So how did you feel about being on Victory when I when I messaged you and said I have a song and I'd love for you to to sing on it? Yeah, I mean, I loved it. I when you sent me through the demo, it was um, you know, the vocal of how it went and stuff. Immediately it was catchy, it um spoke truth, and it was one of those tunes that for days afterwards after hearing it, I was like, I can't get it out of my head. Um so that was a real encouragement. And honestly, I really enjoy collabs and working together with other artists. I think it's mm -hmm. really fun to be mm -hmm. able to join um hearts creativity sound you know um i mean i've got like you say the hymn in christ and i've got quite a traditional voice i guess generally and so just being able to be involved in other stuff is really fun i really yeah. enjoy it yeah. um so yeah i was really really pumped sarah really yeah, yeah, yeah. a real privilege yeah I, I wish we didn't have lockdown because then we'd have done the video together yeah i had to think outside the box on that one and, and get everyone <laughs> i mean i look just like my um video <laughs> you do you i did have to tell you that i've got blue eyes and not brown though when you sent me through the original yeah, one yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really it was really interesting doing that i, I actually had fun because i did it myself oh so great the skills you pick up in lockdown eh i know it's just because when i kept trying to get somebody to do it for me i found that i had to explain the brief to the nth degree Mm -hmm. And then I realized, actually, all this detail, I could do it myself because I'm having to explain what you need to do per time. I'm like, OK, do you know what? I've got an iPhone. If everyone <laughs> on the project has got an iPhone, I think we're sorted. We're halfway there. Um, but yeah. no, it was, it was really it was really good fun working with you, Zion and Tom and just getting yeah. the end, you know, the end product. And I found that a lot of people love listening to the song with their kids. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like it might be one for kids church at a point. Yeah, I think so. I think it's got the because for me as well, like leading worships, are often family worship, you want to find songs that the young and the old can connect with. And so that nobody feels completely uncomfortable, but it's got enough fun and enough joy for the kids to join in, but enough truth and uh, enough connectivity for the adults to join in. So that is a really good song for that, for that. Definitely. Yeah, that is so true. I think truth is one of the things that I've really come to terms with in the last four or five years in terms of the the um what the sort of the content of the songs that we sing in church um mm -hmm. sometimes it's the melody and you know the uh, the dynamics of the song sometimes that tend to determine whether or not it gets featured and then the truth comes after and right. God has been working with me on me rather on this particular thing for the, the last four or five years in terms of truth first before even the voice before what it sounds like before the harmony because worship mm -hmm. is about declaring the truth of who God is to him he knows that already mm -hmm. we're declaring it to him and we're reminding us uh, we're reminding ourselves of the truth of who he has called us in him and the mm -hmm. revelation and the realization of that just makes us worship him even more but it's yes. all rooted in truth as the bible says we are called to worship in spirit and in truth not for the harmonies not for the melodies not for the hype or the excitement or the emotions but for the truth and I feel like that's something we need to go back to mm -hmm. you know um just as a 
body i.e the body mm. of christ we need to mm. go back to the songs that are full of truth i remember there was a time when because i during lockdown i started going for runs and and walking and i'd listen to the bible or just listen to worship music and it got to a point where i found that some of the songs i was listening to yes the christian songs they're gospel songs and they had some truth but they weren't so deep so i then went onto spotify and i looked for old integrity and old maranatha songs yeah and I just went for a walk one day and I just listened to Maranatha and it took me back, you know, the mm. songs that had flutes in them. Oh, there's one particular song I think, where did all the flutes go? Because you, uh. <laughs> you can just hear the flutes and it's like, what happened to the flutes? <laughs> <laughs> Some of those flutes should stay buried. But um, yeah, I know. We were listening to some old Ron Canoli stuff the other day and uh, it was just so fun to listen back to it from yeah. years and years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the truth is, you know, fundamental in our worship. Absolutely. And it, it's that balance of having truth to fill you and then space to respond, isn't it? So you want the songs that are filled with truth that are feeding you, but also if you have a whole worship time that's jam packed full of so much content, you can end up feeling a bit overfull. Yeah, so right, so right, 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 it's right. really good to make sure that you have this element of real depth real revelation mm -hmm. and then opportunity to respond and sometimes that response can come through many words and sometimes it can come through a phrase or a sentence you know and so mm -hmm. i think just making sure but if you only if you only feed yourself on the shallow stuff then you're, you're never fully satisfied and you don't get that you know that deep revelation and mm -hmm. the bible talks about how um we're to kind of sing to one another with psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, you know, mm -hmm. and as we do that, it's for teaching and admonishing and building up and edifying. And so there is that teaching dy dynamic to it mm -hmm. uh, that speaks into our soul, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and wakes us up to that great revelation of who God is and then mm -hmm. who we are in him and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. it's a really good journey to be on, Sarah. Definitely. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. And it's a constantly evolving journey where you're yeah. discovering more and more of who mm. God is. It's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I love it. Um, so the album is called Restored. And um, one of the things I ask everyone who's who's given me the privilege of being on the project, because I genuinely feel honoured that you all are on the project. One of the questions I've asked all the features is what Restored means to you? Because when I got the title of the project in 2019, I didn't mm -hmm. quite understand why Restored. I mean, I was asking God, is it me being restored or you know what's being restored but I just heard the word restored I hadn't mm. quite captured the revelation behind the, the 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 title and then you know the unmentionable happened we had COVID we had lockdown all through 2020 because when I got the revelation not the, the direction I should say to release the project I started with my spreadsheets I went into planning mode I had all my things laid out it was going to come out 2020 you know all that fun yeah. stuff and that just went out the window very quickly um and then uh, halfway through 2020, and I hadn't written, the thing about what I receive in terms of projects is sometimes I receive the title, the theme, but I don't have the song. So I hadn't written a song called Restored, but I knew the album was going to be called Restored. Mm. But sometime through the half, um, halfway through 2020, I began to see what God meant by restored. I began mm. to see the trajectory that the entire, obviously, I'd say I'm not the only person who has this revolutionary revelation but God began to show me the trajectory that the whole planet had gone through and what mm -hmm. 2021 and going forward was going to be for many, which mm -hmm. is a time and a season of restoration. Mm -hmm. So he then began to make me understand why restored. And then, you know, the writing of the actual title track revolved around experiencing loss, experiencing um, mm -hmm. discouragement, experiencing failure but then remembering that in Christ we're restored. So that was how, you know, the whole theme mm -hmm. and the song itself came about. And I, and I know that restored means so many things to so many different people for so many different reasons. And I'd quite mm -hmm. like to know, you know, what restored means to you. Um, I think when I think about that word, I think about um, being made whole and mm -hmm. being put back together. There's that, um, often people use that image of that Japanese vase, don't they, that has the that's been smashed and then it gets pieced back together, but there's all the fragments, the lines, the, the light shining through, you can mm -hmm. see, and there's beauty in that. 
um, mm. and they regard it as more beautiful than it was before before it was put back together. Mm. Um, sorry, before it was smashed. And I suppose for me, the restoration thing is about um, being brought back to what you were supposed to be. You know, mm. before the fall, before any of that happened, we were supposed to be in communion, whole, well, in in you know, in this relationship with God. And mm. then the fall happened, and then through Jesus, we now have this. Um, promise of full restoration again where we will be made fully new fully whole and we're on that journey we're on that process um so i think for me restoration is about bringing back um who we're supposed to be but it's a it's a piece by piece thing mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. isn't it it mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a long time it mm -hmm. can be a, a restoration of the mind of the heart of relationships mm -hmm. of the of our dignity there are so many different elements to um life that needs restoration um, mm -hmm. that needs to have that restoring back to what it's meant to be mm -hmm. um, so i think, think that's really telling i've not even received that you know, dimension of, of restored before, but what you've just said piece by piece, that is really telling. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's how it works. You know, I think one of the 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 thing interesting things about Christianity and our faith is that we have this declaration of by his stripes we are healed, you know, yeah. and we are um now saved. But then there's this this uh, thing that you kind of say where you're kind of being saved. So you're saved but you're being saved. You're you're made whole but you're being made whole. And it's like mm -hmm. you have the truth in Christ, but also there's this ongoing journey of it until Jesus returns. And so mm -hmm. it's the now and the not quite yet, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we're always living in, with that tension. And so, um, you know, in, in Christ, we have the mind of Christ now, but we still have to learn how to live with the mind of Christ. We still have to learn how to allow that to, to uh, I don't know, um, be a fragrant through, you know, through, through the whole of our lives. Mm -hmm. that, that kind of, fragrance of Jesus we carry him we mm -hmm. we want to um, have him alive in every area of our lives but it takes a while for our minds and our bodies and everything else to catch up sometimes because yeah. we are living in a fallen world yeah. but yeah. Jesus has won the victory and Jesus is the Lord and Jesus yeah. is now seated in the heavens yeah. and he you know and it does say oh death where is your sting but it actually says in that that you don't really get the final completion of that moment until Jesus returns. Then, mm. you know, it's when he returns, then we say these things. And so mm -hmm. God is in the in the business of restoring us back mm -hmm. to who we're made to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is an ongoing journey. Um, that's right, that's right. And that, again, just shows the grace of God because there's no demand from him that we have to get it right every time or you know he's so kind to us he he's he's slow to anger he's you know quick to to pour out his love and his favor and he's um yeah he's just so gracious to us he wants us to do well he wants you to win he wants every part of you to be made whole mm. you know and, he, and he'll take you on that journey and the process sometimes is not comfortable the process sometimes is painful um, but he will bring you through to the other yeah. side because that's his promise. Anyway, yeah, I'm going. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's that's amazing, and I think that's somebody's revelation today. I'm sure there's somebody listening who needs to hear that. I mean, it's just a journey, and yeah. it's it's one where we learn to trust and to hold on and to mm -hmm. believe that we're constantly being made whole. We're constantly being healed. If you know you're trusting for a, a healing or you know, for your mind, for your body, we're constantly, he's working, basically God is constantly working. So if you're experiencing a, a season in your life where you feel like you're broken or everything is lost, remember that God is working, even yeah. if you don't understand what's happening, yeah. even if we don't know, feel it, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. he is, absolutely. I think that's a song, even when I can see it, you're working, exactly, yeah. literally those mm -hmm. words, he is always working, yeah. he never stops working, that's amazing, hallelujah. Um, mm. Right, so probably rounding up now but yeah I, I I always like to um ask one fun trivia and <laughs> <laughs> no need to get nervous um if there was a fun fact about you that would make people's jaws drop oh like my gosh my goodness I can't believe that about Lou <laughs> like you got an unpaid parking ticket or whatever I don't know um I got what <laughs> an unpaid parking ticket or something oh <laughs> I don't know I'm just saying 
<laughs> but if there was uh, like one fact about you that people would find would find really amusing, what would that be? I don't know. I've got so many and what and so little all at the same time. I mean, when I I, I was born in Australia, people wouldn't necessarily know that. Oh, wow. Um, and travelled around as a little girl around the south of England. Lived in all sorts of places. Lived in Australia twice. Um, I was a tomboy growing up. I love climbing really? trees. I got banned from my youth group for two weeks <laughs> for dislocating a boy's thumb. Um, I, think we were, I think we were playing some sort of basketball game and I grabbed the ball too hard and wasn't. Oh my you know, God. <laughs> you must so, have been really strong. I was, I'm stronger than I look. I think that's a good fun fact. Oh my days. That's amazing. <laughs> That is really, I would never have thought that you were a tomboy and I would never definitely have thought that you just dislocated <laughs> so anyone's tomboy. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. yeah. And for breaking a window another time, I was thinking I threw a ball somehow and it landed through a window and I got into trouble for that oh, too. Yeah. Was that in school or at home? Uh, that was at youth group as well. Fortunately, oh, the wow. church was nice. They have to keep accepting you, don't they? Because it's yeah. church, isn't it? Yay. um so anyway yeah so stuff like that i've got four sisters you might not know that four younger sisters i'm the eldest of five girls oh wow um so yeah sounds fun it sounds like you must have had a really fun um childhood or even youth youth <laughs> youth season a youthful <laughs> season whatever that I, I, I don't know how you express that sounds like yeah. you had all the exciting you know experiences of traveling around the world i love australia it's a beautiful country I don't know why you'd ever leave there, to be honest. It's so <laughs> far away. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In England, we can get anywhere, can't we? That's the nice thing. We can yeah, travel that's anywhere. right. I mean, I was only six, so I didn't really have a lot of say in whether or not we would stay there. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I bet, I bet. Yeah. That sounds yeah. like a really exciting life. And obviously, you're married, you've got kids. And, yeah. Yeah, and life just goes on wow no that's been really really fun chatting and um and i'm hoping that people who have been with us this whole time have taken something away from the conversation and should they yeah. get the album restored by the way absolutely you will you will do you good if you get the album restored because it sounds like it's got all those songs you know that will do your soul good sarah's thought them through god has given her these moments of revelation and you can use them to listen to to sing truth into your life so you should definitely get the album yeah thank you so much lisa what she said <laughs> yeah and the great thing is it's out now you can get it on all music platforms and if you have alexa you can actually yeah. say alexa play sarah table i don't have alexa but i've been told nice. that people can tell alexa to do stuff like play music or follow artists actually one of yeah. my friends sent me a video today of herself saying to alexa alexa play sarah tabo and it played my song i was really impressed so if you have alexa you can literally <laughs> say alexa play sarah tabo it might not get it the first time because she she didn't get it uh, well, is it is it is she a she i don't know alexa didn't get it the first time but it got it in the <laughs> end so you might want to try two or three times but it will play if you've got amazon prime You've got me free music, so you can listen to me on there and Apple, Spotify, YouTube, the whole shebang. Share it. You know, share it. Share exactly. it. Follow, <laughs> like, get it all there. You've got to do it all, people, because it does make a difference. You it know, does. it does actually have impact. So like it, share it, download it, do whatever it needs to do to to get uh, that those songs out and about. Yeah, and, and a blessing to you as well. I think the most important thing is the songs, when you listen to them, hopefully they'll inspire yeah. you. They'll take you deeper in God's presence. They'll help you, you know, spend time of unhurried worship, soaking in his presence, because that's what yeah, we need great. in this age. Even when everything is locked down, it felt like everything was still happening at the same time. So we really need to be able to, you know, kind of walk away, withdraw. Yeah and spend time in his presence and my prayer is that when you listen to the songs on the project they'll help you to be able to do just that and even more okay thank you so much Lou for, for joining me this evening thanks for um, having me and bless you bye. and bless blessings to yeah. you and listening as well yeah bye. thanks everyone for hanging with us bye Good evening. stay safe bye you are the mountain Chains that bind us You calm the stormy weather Floodlight into the darkness